Do we have any questions from the audience? Do you have any frequently asked questions that you are asked about any of the 10 ways, Laura? Um, yeah, there's definitely some uh, common questions asked specifically about bioreactors that I tried to cover. Um, you know, how long will it last? 10 years? How much will it cost me? Roughly $10,000. Um, the other most common question is, do the wood chips matter? Uh, yeah, and a uh, short answer, the kind of wood chip doesn't matter, hardwood versus softwood, uh, but the wood chips themselves do matter in terms of the physical qualities of the wood chips. Um, you're really looking for something that's about half an inch to two inches in size, very squarish or rectangular in shape, um, so not mulch, not sawdust, not shreds of wood. Um, and so, yeah, really what we would call a playground chip, what you might see at a playground, that's what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, that's probably the most common question. What, what kind of wood chip should I even use? And so we do have some guidance on that. Thank you, Laura. Any other questions? Uh, okay, we have one question from the website, and the question is, how is the process to get permits for the in-ditch bioreactors? Do we need permits for to install a bioreactor? Well, I, I guess I'll, I'll take a stab at that, Ray, but I know um, Ray is also familiar with this question. Um, <clears throat> To my knowledge, the, the one in-ditch bioreactor that Ray and I worked on together, um, because the ditch outletted into a wetland area, um, Army Corps of Engineers uh, and NRCS were involved in a wetland determination, um, but that was actually downstream of where we installed the ditch. Uh, the, wetland was down, the wetland was downstream of where we installed the bioreactor. Um, and so there, there was a few extra steps that we went through uh, once we realized that we could just put the bioreactor upstream of that and everything would be fine, I think we were clear. Ray, is am I recalling that correctly for that for that one site? Yes, Laura. Um, we just had to be sure we didn't run afoul of uh, what they call down here the blue stream, uh, blue line stream. Uh, so if it's a permanent stream bed, then yeah, we probably wouldn't have had permission to to do anything in that channel. But as long as we were back out of that and in an agricultural ditch, uh, it didn't, did not require any permit. That's a good question. That's a question and that is, is there any evidence that uh, the conservation efforts in the Midwest are having an impact on uh, hypoxia areas in the Gulf of Mexico? That's a difficult thing to assess, I know, but is there any uh, evidence that you're having some positive results? Um, so that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, so one of the things that, that we've done some baseline uh, estimations um, of nitrogen and phosphorus loading, uh, say, to the, to the, leaving the state of Iowa. Uh, and we, um, from that work, if we go, tried to do some estimation from the 80s to, to modern day, and, and from that, there's some potential on, on some reductions in phosphorus, particularly associated with sediment loss, because we have made improvements in tillage and um, uh, primarily tillage uh, practices from the 80s to, to modern day. Uh, as we look at the nitrogen side, uh, it's it's less clear because, you know, as we think about it, we really haven't been focusing on nitrogen reduction practices nearly as much um, historically, you know, for the last 20 or 30 years. It's more in the last you know, five to, to 10 years. And, and even then, um, the level of implementation is really so small um, that we would not expect to see, you know, much impact, maybe a a percent or two. Just to kind of give an example uh, for 
our nitrogen reduction strategy for one of the scenarios um, to reach a 45% reduction goal in Iowa, we need to see essentially all acres in Iowa, all corn soybean acres using um, better nitrogen management reduced rate to the MRTN and 60% of all acres in Iowa that, are, that have corn soybean or continuous corn having a cover crop on that land and 28% of all of our agricultural land treated by a wetland and 60% of our drained land uh, treated by a bioreactor. You know, so that's, that ends up being about 12 million acres of cover crops, 7.5 million acres treated by a wetland and about six to 7 million acres treated by a bioreactor. And so, you know, right now we ultimately need 12 million acres. We have about 600,000 acres of cover crops. We need about 7,500 wetlands, we have about 90. We need 120,000 bioreactors, we, need, we have about 40 or 50. And so the, that's where I get at the scale of change is so large for us to reach those goals. We are just starting that process, I believe, across, across the Midwest. Um, and so you know, we're challenged with uh, financial resources to do that. And I would say even if we had all the financial resources for, for cost share incentive dollars, we don't have the, uh, the people resources that are trained uh, to do this and, and understand some of these practices. So uh, that's a long-winded answer to say, I think we're just getting started uh, with this, uh, especially if we look at the nitrogen side. I might say that in the Chesapeake Bay, I don't have the kinds of numbers that you have. Um, I think the model has predicted that we are moving in the right direction and may, making progress, uh, whether or not it's enough to meet the targets, which we had, do have some targets that on a certain timeline, uh, we may still be falling somewhat short of making the targets on the time that uh, they would like to see. However, if you look in the bay itself, uh, there has been a recovery of the striped bass, and so that's a positive. So you're seeing a biological improvement in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, maybe starting to see some improvement in oyster, uh, but then, you know, it's oyster, striped bass, blue crab. Uh, oyster and crab are lagging behind the striped bass, but uh, at least that's an indication that maybe we're uh, having some important uh, benefit. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting close to the end of our time and I don't see any other uh, questions from the audience. I hope all of you have uh, completed the poll. Let us know uh, how this helped you. We hope it's been beneficial to you. And then watch again for the uh, an announcement about the January presentation. They do plan to have one, but it may not be on the regular date for the month.